Associate Professor, Department of Plant Sciences, University of Tennessee, and I work with organic cropping systems. So I'm faculty at the University of Tennessee. 75% of my time I work in research. I do research in organic cropping systems, primarily vegetable crops, but also in some fruits like strawberry, which are a similar production system. And then 25% of my time I do teaching, so I teach two classes at the University of Tennessee. Well, I think organic production systems are growing for a number of reasons. I think the first is, of course, as you alluded to, there's a lot of consumer demand uh, for consumers to have products that have fewer pesticide residues and have production practices that specifically pay attention to environmental quality and environmental impacts. Uh, for growers in Tennessee specifically, I think growers like the production system because they can get some what we call premiums for their products. They can charge a, a greater price and that consumers are willing to pay a greater price because of the way that that product is produced. Organic production systems are challenging and in many ways they integrate a lot of knowledge from a lot of different production areas, right? You have to know a lot about entomology or insects, and you have to know a lot about pathology and soil science and horticulture and crop science. And it can be really difficult to integrate all of that knowledge to uh, create a quality product on a specific site that has specific environmental conditions. And as we think about conventional agriculture, the products used in conventional agriculture, like pesticides that cannot be used in organic agriculture, they do a lot to basically smooth over those differences in environmental conditions from site to site. Because if you have a pest, you know you can control it with that particular uh, pesticide. In organic agriculture, you have to do a lot more to understand how those pests are interacting with the local environmental conditions in order to create the conditions that are favorable for production of that particular crop. I think a farmer that's been farming for a long time, that might be very difficult, right? Because they've learned to do things a specific way and to change their production system to an organic production system would require a lot of changes in management, maybe in equipment, maybe in the crops they're growing, the varieties they're growing, and that can be very difficult to do. So I think any grower that's thinking about going to organic production systems, they'd want to do it gradually. A lot of times when we think about that transition period, a large conventional grower might transition just a small portion of their land to organic and market that separately from the rest of their products until they can learn that production system and have less of a risk at the front end. So with organic production systems, we often think that uh, you have to manage that crop to what we call a whole systems approach. Uh, we also might call that overall field, something like agroecology. Uh, you have to learn about all those different components of the system and how they interact to allow those plants to grow and produce in that particular climate, in that particular environment. So as you think about this for all of the different crops out there, um, not only in Tennessee, but across the world, all the different environmental conditions, all the different pests that they have, uh, you can see that there's a great amount of knowledge that you really need to have to manage crops without using some of those inputs that would be allowed to be used in conventional production systems. One thing that I do a lot of research on is soil disinfestation. So with high value vegetable crops or crops like strawberry, uh, Conventionally, these crops have typically been grown with soil fumigation, so using a chemical pesticide that's a fumigant uh, to nearly sterilize the soil prior to planting those crops. And that removes propagules or, or uh, what we might say pathogens and weed seeds and things from the soil prior to planting that crop. Soil fumigation is, is used to control pests, that soil-borne pests in soil, whether those might be fungal pests, bacterial pests, weed pests, uh, nematodes in soil that attack plants. And in organic agriculture, you cannot use soil fumigants. And so a lot of the work that I've done is to look at organic alternatives to use of soil fumigants. And one thing that we've done is called anaerobic soil disinfestation. It's a, a technique of incorporating organic matter into soil and getting it to decompose anaerobically so that the compounds that are produced when something decomposes anaerobically, you may be familiar with things like acetic acid, which is a compound in vinegar, uh, butyric acid. There's a lot of other volatile compounds that are formed under natural anaerobic decomposition of organic matter. And these things are toxic to a number of soil-borne plant pathogens. So we've been using that instead of uh, what would be used in a 
many conventional systems, soil fumigation for these high value crops. Most of my research does deal with organic alternatives to soil fumigation. So we've been doing a lot with organic amendments to drive anaerobic decomposition to control specific pests. And two of the pests we've looked at uh, most recently are southern blight, which is a a pathogen that affects a lot of warm season vegetable crops like tomato, uh, pepper, and, and cucurbits. And then we've also recently worked a lot with black root rot complex of strawberry, which is uh, the primary pathogen that causes issues with strawberry production in the southeastern U.S. And we've looked at ways to control that pathogen through increasing uh, organic matter in soil and then the effects that that organic matter decomposition in soil has on both the chemical compounds in soil, but also the organisms in soil that are encouraged by that organic matter decomposition. There's one fungal uh, organism in soil, trichoderma, which is known as a beneficial organism in soil that tends to increase when organic matter is incorporated into soil in this, in this practice. And we've seen with southern blight, for example, southern blight forms this hard survival structure. It's just a really small uh, spherical um, survival structure in soil that can survive for many seasons in soil. And what we've seen is uh, with increasing organic matter through the soil disinfestation process, we've seen in these sites that have been treated like this, the trichoderma is actually parasitizing some of those fungal survival structures of the pathogen. So it's a method of natural biological control that we can encourage through the management practices that we're using in a specific production system. So organic agriculture has a number of required practices. In the United States, uh, organic products to be sold as organic have to be certified by the USDA. And that certification comes along with it a set of practices that farmers must use on their farm to produce those crops and then to market those crops. And so a lot of those practices deal with how the specific management practices for a crop impact environmental quality. So for example, organic farmers have to use cover crops. In, a particular, in any particular farming system. And those cover crops are used because they help to prevent soil erosion, uh, they help to increase soil organic matter, they provide habitat for beneficial organisms. And so that's just one practice that organic farmers have to use. It's not to say that conventional farmers don't also use that practice, those practices, but organic farmers are required to use those practices in order to sell their products as organic. There are a number of other practices that organic farmers are required to do that get to environmental quality. Some of these include things like the pesticides that organic farmers are allowed to use tend to be pesticides that are natural products and that degrade very rapidly in the environment so that they don't have or that they have fewer off-target impacts on beneficial insects or pollinators or other beneficial organisms. Other things that you might see in a supermarket may be uh, national products that use things like natural. The most organic producers in Tennessee do market locally, so if you're interested in finding those products, best outlet is probably your local farmer's market. A lot of organic producers also sell through local grocery stores or even chain grocery stores that then market those products as locally grown. Some farmers also do what we call community supported agriculture su subscription programs or CSAs where you can subscribe to uh, an amount of produce throughout the growing season uh, from a specific farm that's offering that service. And that's another uh, marketing practice that a lot of organic growers use in Tennessee. 